when I was young, when I was a kid, I was uh, I had quite a dysfunctional upbringing. So there was quite a lot of violence in my house, and it was a bit crazy and you know very messy. And I used to run away from home. I used to sleep on the streets from the age of twelve. And at 12 years of age, I remember sleeping in telephone boxes, uh, train stations, I slept in the woods a couple of times, park benches. And so, you know, I, I grew up uh, with a lot of dysfunction. You know, there was a lot of things that weren't right. And, and I always think that children are a product of their environment. So if they grow up in a, an environment that's very chaotic and mad, you know, it kind of rubs off and that's what they, that's what they give out themselves, that's what they become. And I was a classic case of that. And also, when I when I got older, I, I fell in with the wrong crowd, and you know, I used to take lots of drugs. I got into drink, and I got I used to drink so much that I ended up. By the time I was 17, I woke up one morning and my skin was yellow because I literally drunk myself into such a state that I, I, you know, had a major serious illness, which was hepatitis. And I was 17 years of age, and. Um, I got expelled from school, I was in trouble with the law a lot and I was, t I was a product of my environment, I was completely off the rails and, but there was a part of me that always wanted to be good but I just didn't know how to, I just knew how to be bad and so I was always looking to try and find something that worked for me and that came along when I, after I got over hepatitis I was laid up in bed for six weeks and I lost lots of weight and the doctor said I couldn't drink, he said if you touch another drop of alcohol in the next year you're going to be dead. So I had to completely abstain from alcohol and all that kind of thing and I was laid up so it was a really good period for me to sort of start again. And it was at that time I met up with some, a new crowd of friends after that time and I, I got into a band and the band became my focus and took me off into a much more positive direction. You know, with, my, with my friends in the band at the time we worked really hard and uh, after three years we we won like a competition called the Battle of the Bands, which was like the X Factor of its day. It was like a real big deal. It was on BBC One. It was a £10,000 prize, and this was in 1983. And it was at Hammersmith Odeon, Full House, and we won it by a mile. And so I thought that was it. You know, it was going to be the life of a rock and roll star, which is like, you know, it was right up my street at that time. I couldn't, you know, I'd have loved it. But I'd probably been dead by now if I'd have gone that route, um, because it was, it was literally all sex and drugs and rock and roll, you know, which uh, yeah, would have, it would have killed me. So, uh, in some ways, I look back now, it didn't, it didn't last. Fortunately, that came and went like Hayley's Comet, you know, as quickly as we were up there and on telly and doing all that stuff, it disappeared, you know, some, a single didn't chart. And so, for a long time afterwards, I tried to get back that, because I had a taste of that lifestyle and it was so intoxicating for a young man that I just wanted that again, I wanted that rock and roll lifestyle. But it wasn't for me because, um, you know, it was, it was too decadent and hedonistic for my kind of character. So, um, it was for a long time afterwards, I looked for that again, I tried to recapture that, but I didn't. And so I ended up on the cabaret circuit, playing in pubs and bars and restaurants and doing clubs. And that was good fun, you know, I, I paid the mortgage for a few years and I, I did that for about seven years. I was drawn into the world of hypnosis because I, when I was doing gigs you know, in the cabaret circuit, doing pubs and clubs, every now and again we'd share the bill with a stage hypnotist. And it really fascinated me watching those guys work and seeing hypnosis up close, which you do in a stage show. And stage hypnosis shows are purely entertainment. They're using hypnosis to entertain. Was the kind of hypnosis I was drawn to was the hypnosis that helps to heal and overcome problems, that kind of thing. And that's a totally separate thing. You've got entertainment and healing, and that's the clear distinction. So I was really drawn to it for that side, mainly because I wanted to fix my own dysfunction. I'd overcome a, a few addictions and problems, you know, alcohol and drugs and all that kind of thing. And I, you know, I started. I was beginning to start to feel empowered. So I signed up with Hypnotherapy College in London, did a two-year diploma, and I began to you know, then go into the world of hypnotherapy and and it was, for me, it was a fantastic journey. It was a real epiphany going into that world because I was able to heal a lot of my own dysfunction and cure a lot of things that had held, held me back. And because I'd gone through all those problems, you know, the difficult past, and I'd learned about hypnotherapy, I had real life experience of what it was to have a lot of those problems. 
So when I was seeing clients, I was able to really empathise with them and understand why they were so stuck, uh, because I've been there myself. So it kind of really helped me, you know, having my past and being a hypnotherapist at that time. And you know, I soon got really busy. I saw lots of clients, and I still see lots of clients. And you know, and I really love that. I love the one-to-one -one sessions and being able to help people move on and overcome problems. It's such a great thing. And so really that, that was my journey. It was from, you know, wild delinquent wayward kid to, you know, becoming a hypnotherapist. And I, I kind of had to go down that road because I was looking to heal my own problems. You know, that's what led me into it. Maybe if I hadn't had, have had that upbringing, I would have gone into something else. But that was my journey. And, you know, I'm really glad I've, I've done it. I wouldn't want to do it again, but I'm glad I'm here now.